Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. A few minor difficulties with his microphones. They never seem to work when you want them. As we gather together, my beloved, here in church, and I know many, many are watching over the internet as well, family and friends from near and far. Allow me to read the 23rd Psalm from the Old Testament. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you kindly stand? Oh God, be merciful unto us. May God be merciful unto us. Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Blameless in the way, alleluia. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes, alleluia. My soul is worn with endless longing for your judgments at all times, alleluia. My soul has slumbered from sorrow, strengthen me with your words, alleluia. Incline my heart unto your testimonies and not unto covetousness, alleluia. Despair to call of me because of sinners that forsake your law, alleluia. I am a partaker with all that fear you and with them that keep your commandments, alleluia. 
Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy. We pray to you, O Lord, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the departed servant of God, Catherine, Katina, and for the forgiveness of her every transgression, voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy. Let the Lord establish her soul where the just repose, the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, the remission of her sins. Let us ask of Christ, our immortal King and God. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant, Catherine, O Christ our God. To you we give glory, together with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Your hands, O Lord, have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding, and I will learn your commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. For I have become as a bottle in the frost, yet your statutes have I not forgotten. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I am yours, O oh, save me. For after your statutes have I sought, have mercy on me, O Lord. From your judgments I have not declined, for you have set a law for me. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever in return for your mercies. Have mercy on me, O Lord. It is time to serve the Lord, but they have violated your law. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Have mercy on me, O Lord. And have mercy upon me, alleluia. Look upon me and have mercy on me, according to the judgment of them that love your name, alleluia. I am young and accounted as nothing. Your statutes have I not forgotten. Hear my voice, O Lord. According to your mercy, according to your judgments, quicken me, alleluia. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, and because of your words my heart has been afraid, alleluia. My soul shall live and he shall praise you, and your judgments will help me, alleluia. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Alleluia. The choir of the saints has found the fountain of life and the door of paradise. May I also find the way through repentance the sheep that was lost am I. Call me up to you, O Savior, and save me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. You who of old did fashion me out of nothingness, and with your image divine did honor me. But because of the transgressions of your commandments did return me again to the earth where I was taken. Lead me back to be refashioned into the ancient beauty of your likeness. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. 
I am an image of your unutterable glory, though I bear the scars of my stumblings. Have compassion on me, the work of your hands, O sovereign Lord, and cleanse me through your loving kindness, and the homeland of my heart's desire. Bestow on me by making me a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Give rest, O God, unto your servant, and appoint for her a place in paradise, where the choirs of the saints, O Lord, and the just will shine forth like stars. To your servant that is sleeping now, do you give rest, overlooking all of her offenses. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the trine or radiance of one Godhead with reverent song, acclaiming, let us cry, Holy are you, eternal Father, co-eternal Son and Spirit divine. Shine with your light on us, who with faith adore you, and from the fire eternal rescue us. Both now and ever to the ages of ages, amen. Hail, O gracious lady, that in the flesh bears God from salva for the salvation of all and through whom the human race has found salvation. Through you may we find paradise, Theotokos, Our Lady, pure and blessed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. Where is the pleasure in life which is unmixed with sorrow? Where is the glory which on earth has stood firm and unchanged? All things are weaker than shadow or more elusive than dreams. Comes one fell stroke and death in turn prevails over all these vanities. Wherefore, in the light of Christ of your countenance and in the sweetness of your beauty, to her whom you have chosen, grant repose, for you are the friend of mankind. Like a blossom that wastes away and like a dream that passes and is gone, so is every mortal into dust resolved. But again, when the trumpet sounds its call, as though at the quaking of the earth, all the dead shall rise and go forth to meet you, O Christ our God. On that day, O Lord, for her whom you have withdrawn from among us, Appoint a place in the tentings of your saints, yea, for the spirit of your servant, O Christ. Vanity are all the works and quests of men, for they have no being after death has come. Our wealth is with us no longer. How can our glory go with us? For when death has come, all these things are vanished clean away. Wherefore, to Christ, the immortal King, let us cry, 
to her that has departed grand repose, where a home is prepared for all those whose hearts you have filled with gladness. Terror truly post past compare is by the mystery of death inspired. Now the soul and the body part, disjoined by restlessness, might. Their concord is broken, and the bond of nature which made them live and grow as one, now by the edict of God is rest in twain. Wherefore now we implore your, your aid. Grant that your servant now gone to rest, where the just are yours, abide, life bestower and friend of mankind. I call to mind the prophet who shouted, I am but earth and ash. And once again I looked with attention on the tombs, and I saw the bones therein which of flesh were naked. And I said, which indeed is he that is king, which is the soldier, which the wealthy, which the needy, which the righteous, for which the sinner. But to your servant, O Lord, grant that with the righteous she may repose. My beginning and foundation was the form bestowing word of your commandment. For it pleased you to make me by compounding visible and invisible nature into a living thing. Out of the earth was my body formed and made but a soul you gave me by the divine and life-creating in-breathing. Wherefore, O Christ, to your servant, in the land of the living, in the courts of the righteous, do you grant repose. Bring to her rest, O our Savior, you giver of life, our sister whom you have withdrawn from this transient world, for she leaps up her voice Crying glory to you. I weep and with tears lament, when with understanding think on death, and see how in the grave there sleeps the beauty which once for us was fashioned in the image of God, and now is shapeless, ignoble, and bare of all the graces. Oh, how strange a thing! What is this mystery which concerns us humans? Why were we given up to decay? And why to death united in wedlock? Truly it is written, these things come to pass by ordinance of God, who to him, to her now gone, give rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, your death, O Lord, which you have endured is become the harbinger of deathlessness, if you had not been laid in your tomb, then would not the gates of paradise have been opened. Wherefore to her now go, may you give rest, for you are the friend of mankind. Both now and ever to the ages of ages, amen. Virgin, chaste, and holy, gateway of the word, mother of our God, make supplication that her soul find mercy. Remember us, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say, O manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Blessed is the Place of rest. 
Μακαρία Ιωδός η πορεύηση μέρο ο κοιτιμάστησι το πως αναπαψεώς blesser is the way where you walk today for there is prepared for you a place of rest please be seated as we listen to the epistle reading today let us be attentive. Wisdom, let us attend. Brethren, we would not have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry and a command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Peace be with you, the reader. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. The reading according to the Gospel of John, let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. The Lord said to those who came to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I cannot, I can do nothing on my own authority. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, Catherine, departed this life, the forgiveness of her every transgression, voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy. May the Lord God establish her soul where the just repose the mercy of God, the kingdom of the heavens, the forgiveness of her sins from Christ, 
our immortal King and God. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God of all spirits and flesh, who has trotted down death, destroying the power of the devil, bestowing life on your world, to the soul of your servant, Catherine, Katina, departed this life, do you yourself, O Lord, give rest in a place of light, in a place of green pasture, in a place of refreshment, from where pain and sorrow and mourning are fled away, every sin by her committed in thought, in word or deed, do you as our good and loving God forgive, seeing that there is no one that shall live and sin not, for you alone are without sin. Your righteousness and your law is truth. Lord, have mercy. To Kiriu de Thome. Kiriu de Song. O tis y anastasis, y zoe que y anapavsis, tis que quimimenis dulis theucatinas, Christeo theosimo, que si tin doxan anapendome, si to anarchus patric, to panagio que agatho que zopio su pnevmati. Min ke ai ke istu seonas ton eono. Amen. Glory to you, o Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us. He who has immortal King has authority over both the living and the dead through the intercessions of His most pure and holy Mother the holy and just friend Lazarus, who lay in the grave for four days, of the holy and glorious forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May he give rest to our sister Catherine, who has departed from us and number her among the just and the holy, through his goodness and compassion as our merciful May your memory be eternal. May her memory be eternal. May her memory be eternal. May her memory be eternal. Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. It's often said that in the Orthodox Church we go from one feast to another feast, from one fasting period to another fasting period. And within those boundaries we celebrate wonderful moments in the life of Christ. Today, is the 40th day after the resurrection of our Lord. Today is what we call the leave-taking of Pascha. 
Today is the last day that we see in Christos Anesti, Christ is risen during this ecclesiastical year. It is a time, these 40 days, where we proclaim the good news of Christ. We proclaim the message of hope. We proclaim the festival of festivals. We chanted again and again, Christ is risen from the dead. By death, he trampled down death. He did all that for what? In order to give life to those in the tomb. Christ has destroyed the power, the dominion of Hades. And in doing so, he gave us eternal life. There's a beautiful icon on the wall of our church that speaks volume about this fact. At the moment of our Lord's resurrection, it is a moment where he reaches into the depths of Hades to give life to the very first created Adam and Eve and to free them from the bondage that the evil had upon them. There's a beautiful hymn that we chant on a holy Saturday morning. As you know, it is not quite the resurrection, but it is sort of the prefigurement. It is, it is the foretelling of what is to come. It is really the vast verse, if I can put it that way, of the beautiful festival of the resurrection. And there is sort of a, a little dialogue going on. And it says, today Hades is groaning, he is crying out. My authority is dissolved. I received a mortal as one of the mortals, but this one I am powerless to contain. With him I lose all those over which I ruled. For ages I had held, I was holding on to the dead. But behold, he raises them up all. And he concludes, glory, O Lord, to your cross and to your holy resurrection. The Lord is granting Adam and Eve life. He is reinstating them back into paradise. That is, back into a relationship with the living Lord. If we only knew, and this is the sad reality, that many people in general live through life and they have no idea how much the Lord loves them. We all know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And what did he do? He gave his only begotten son that those who believe in him should not perish but have life everlasting. Because of his immense love for us, he died on the cross in order to trample death. We get a small glimpse of the Lord's love for us when he prays before his crucifixion. And he says, Father, I want those who you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me, because before the creation of the world. To be with him in a place where St. Paul describes in Corinthians, I has not seen nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Special place where we will not taste any longer what this world, this imperfect world has to offer us. 
a place where there's no more, no more pain, no more suffering, but eternal peace in the presence of our Father in heaven. So my beloved, it is with this incredible sense of hope in the resurrection that we come together today. Yes, we are gathering for the funeral of our dear sister Catherine. But we see it as yet another part of life that all of us will encounter. The Lord gave her many years, thank God. And so from that perspective, we rejoice and say thank you. Thank you for the years that you had her as your mother, as your sister, as your Thea. And I know that if I were to ask all of you here to give me a few thoughts, it would give me many, many. And I saw quite a bit of discussion on Facebook of how wonderful Catherine and what a meaningful relationship you had with her, from your sister to your mother to all the nieces and nephews and extended family. And when we allow ourselves to touch the heart of another human being, then we leave an imprint in their life. And obviously, Catherine did that again and again and again with so many of you. And we give thanks to God for that. I chose today to ask her children to speak and to offer a few thoughts on this day. And so I would like to read two reflections, one from Ted and one from his, her daughter, to also, who, who would like, both of them would like to express their heart and feelings and emotions in this day. Ted writes, today is one of the saddest days of my life. I lost the wind beneath my wings, my hero, the one who taught me so much about humanity, about love and the importance of family, of being a loyal friend, my culture and Greek orthodoxy. Saturday morning at 10.23 a.m., I lost my beautiful mother, Catherine. She was a fighter, a trailblazer, a boss lady and the first and original helicopter mom. She provided me with everything I ever needed, spoiled me and taught me how to be a tough cookie when needed. She taught me how to hustle, and I owe my life success to her invaluable lessons. The words I could count on her don't even begin to explain how much she was there for me. She greatly loved her grandsons, Dimitri and Delvin, and brought her, who brought her the biggest joy ever. She loved her sisters, her nieces. They thought she was the cool aunt and loved watching her get dressed up for dates. Nephews, extended family. She was considered an adopted mom to the amazing Saloto girls, Jeanette Halua, and many other friends over the years. She was a matriarch figure for our beloved Jalepe's cousins and family. She cherished them with all of her family and huge circle of lifelong friends. You wouldn't believe how much fun and how many friends my parents had growing up. She taught me how to have a good time. She loved to Greek dance and being involved in the Cleveland Greek community. This woman touched the lives of so many people and I am proud to be her son. Though my heart is broken now, I know she's looking over me, and I was truly blessed to have 
the best mother in the world. And Sophia also writes, this has been a heartbreaking week, especially she, since we could not have our family by our side to come for us as we watched our mother slowly leave this earth. Mom was loving, smart, so hardworking and just days before she passed away, she still said nothing was wrong with her. She struggled with anxiety and worry. She said she was like that since she was a little girl, always worrying about her where her sisters were. In her last days, she mentioned their names countless times. She taught me to always speak up for myself, to help others and take pride in our Greek heritage and know the importance of family. Her tremendous work ethic is instilled in me. Over the years, we often didn't see eye to eye, but the love we shared for each other kept us connected. No matter what happened, no matter what I did, I always knew mom loved me. And her heart opened more to love who I love. She and Scott formed their own special relationship that grew deeper with each year. We've lived away for 26 years, but we have wonderful memories of her visits to Chicago and Los Angeles, particularly after Dimitri and Alvin were born. Nothing could stop this Yaya from hopping on, an, on a plane to be with her babies. It was an amazing gift thrilled to have us finally in the same city. The enforced isolation of this pandemic really broke her and kept our family apart. And now we are broken. I'm incredibly grateful that Ted and I could be reunited with her at hospice to share these last days with her praying that our resurrected Lord will grant her peace in his heavenly kingdom. We also pray for each and every one of you, her children, Sophia and Scott and Ted, her sisters and her grandsons, uh, Dimitri and Dalvin, her sisters, Ray, Irene and Angela, the many, many nieces and nephews, and all those who could not be here today who are following through the internet. I know that everyone's prayer. May the Lord comfort you, strengthen you, and again, may your dear mother find peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Amen. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Truly, he is risen. In a moment, you will be escorted out by our funeral directors to pay your last respects.
sands to burial, no longer remembering, nor yet the vanities which thy often sore distress, yet are now where are now her kindred? Now is come the hour of parting. Let us pray to the Lord to bring her to her rest. What is this less distress? What means you of your party? What means your funeral dirge? Come and give a kiss to her. So lately with us, for consigned to the grave, with stone is she covered, darkness is dwelling, she is with the dead in two. Come, O oh you. Her kindred and comrades, now is come the hour of parting. Let us pray to the Lord to bring her rest. Brethren, come and let us farewell kiss give to whom, her whom death has taken and offer thanks to God, for she has departed from the bosom of her kin, and she hastens to burial, no longer remembering vanity, nor yet the flesh which is often sore distressed. Where are now her kindred and comrades? Now has come the hour of parting. Let us pray to the Lord to bring her to her rest. Brethren, what at this last moment means your distress of parting, your wailing? What means your funeral dirge? Come and give a kiss to her so lately with us. For consigned to the grave is she. With a stone is she to be covered. Darkened is her dwelling place. She with the dead is entombed. Come, all you, kindred and comrades. Now has come the hour of parting. Let us pray to the Lord to bring her to her rest. Brethren, come, 
and let us farewell kiss give to her whom death has taken and offer thanks to God for she has departed from the bosom of her kin and she hastens to burial no longer remembering vanity nor yet the flesh which is often sore distressed where are now her kindred and her comrades now is come the hour of parting let us pray to the Lord to bring her to her rest. Brethren, what if this last moment means your distress of parting, your wailing, what means your funeral dirge? Come and give a kiss to her so lately with us. For consigned to the grave is she. With the stone is she to be covered, darkness her dwelling place. She with the dead is entombed. Come, all you. All you, her kindred and comrades, now is come the hour of parting. Let us pray to the Lord to bring her to her rest. Come, all you, her kindred and comrades, now is come the hour of parting. Let us pray to the Lord to bring her to her rest. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.